Hey guys, me like big boom here and welcome to unturned 3.13.8 This week's update added two awesome new features into unturned one that expands upon the building system And another that completely revamps the temperature system that is most commonly used in Yukon map But it also applies to custom maps and a little bit to also PI in Washington as well both of these things are awesome additions. I definitely think that they're going to be welcomed in the community. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, I'm not sure if many of you guys have played the Yukon map very much before, but if you have, you kind of know that the temperature system works in two ways. You're either freezing or you're not. And you're not freezing when you have all your clothes on, and you are freezing when you um, when you have an exposed part of your body. So if you, like, if you only have a shirt and pants, you will be freezing, but you'll be freezing a little bit slower than if you were just completely naked. And now the temperature system has become a lot more complex and a lot more realistic. It's not complex in that it's difficult to understand, it's actually pretty simple. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, I am currently freezing, but because I have all these clothes on, I'm actually freezing like really, really slowly. As you can see, I'm at 94% now, but in probably five or so seconds, it's probably gonna go down to 93. Oh, it just went to 93 right there. So if you're out scavenging and you have fully geared clothes, um, make sure that rather than being out in the open like I am right now, make sure you're by cover that blocks the wind. So as you can see, all the snow is traveling in this direction. So if I were to go in front of this building, it turns into a little castle, meaning that I'm now defended or protected from the wind and I'm no longer freezing. So as for as long as I'm inside this building, I am free to scavenge for gear and not have to worry all that much about freezing. As you can see, now that I'm exposed again, I'm now starting to cool down and eventually it'll turn into a snowflake indicating that I'm freezing. Now, if I do not have any clothes on, you will notice that I freeze a lot faster. My health is going down very, very quickly. It's going from 88 to 86, then from 86 down to 82. Ooh, see? So you definitely need to go find yourself some cover and uh, find, find some clothes. Now, n even if you're completely naked, as long as you are inside a base, you do not need to worry about uh, temperature. Additionally, if you're gonna be outside for long periods of time exposed to the wind, um, that is if you're building a base or maybe if you're driving around in your car, staying by a campfire will keep you warm. And as you can see down in the bottom left, that symbol is now turned into a warming up symbol. And uh, once again, you do not need to worry about uh, temperature if you're nearby a campfire. But don't get too close because then you'll start burning. And as you can see, it turned into a fire symbol there and my health went down. Now this temperature system is all calculated real time. So it's it's not like being in one of these predetermined structures makes you safe. It's not like a safe zone. You don't have to put it in the level editor or anything like that. It's all calculated real time. So in my base here, as you can see, it now says, well, I'm cooling down, but once that finishes cooling down, um, it will show a little defense symbol. Yep, as you can see here, it's now in a defense symbol, but if I expose myself to the wind here, well, I'm getting too close to the campfire it'll now turn into a cooling down and eventually freezing. Additionally, the heat stim was added, and I'm not entirely sure what it does, but I guess we're gonna find out. And it looks like it warms you up while you're moving in the same way that the campfire does, and it looks like it lasts around 20 or so seconds. I'd say, well, maybe 15 seconds. I kind of wish that would last a lot longer, to be honest. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up the temperature system. Very, very cool. I'm definitely liking how it works. It makes uh, Yukon a lot more oriented around strategy rather than just kind of being lucky and spawning next to a clothes store. Moving on to the new building feature. Now, basically, you can now pick up buildable items if they have full health, and um, if they're damaged, you will now get some of the ingredients back. So, I mean, I'm sure many of you guys have built bases before, and you know that if, for example, if you wanted to move this doorway over here, you'd have to destroy the wall, destroy that torch, destroy the door, destroy the doorway, then make new ones of everything, and then put the wall there, the doorway there, then the door there, and it's just a pain in the butt. It requires a lot of ammo, or explosives, or a lot of time, and uh, it's, it's just not fun. But now, as long as the wall is of full health, or whatever item it is, is of full health, you can hold F on it, and it will pick it up. So now I can move the torch here, and then I can pick up this door frame, put it in my inventory, pick up the door, put it in my inventory, pick up this wall here, and it kind of pops them off the frame, it's kind of funny, and then I can pick up the rest of them and put them down like this. Very nice, and just like that, I was able to move the position of my doorway 
uh, in what, 15 seconds? And then I can also pick up this campfire right there, bingo. Very, very nice. Now I'm sure there are probably two questions that arise because of that. One, what is keeping people from just like picking up your wall and then running away and stealing it? Um, well, it can only be picked up by the people who are in your Steam group or by yourself, the person who placed it down. So some random person just can't run up and then steal your wall and then just run away. No, they can't do that. And then the second question that would probably arise is if something is damaged, then couldn't they just pick up the wall and then place it down and then it would have full health? Well, if the wall is damaged, so if I toss a grenade here and it explodes, if you try and pick it up, it will not give you the wall, it'll give you a portion of the ingredients that were used to make it. So in this instance, because that wall was heavily damaged, it only gave me one log. Whereas if I probably picked up uh, this pillar here, probably give me two logs, maybe? Ah, oh, it looks like it just gave me the pillar itself because it didn't damage it. But you guys kind of get the idea. You can only move walls if they have full health. So this is perfect if you accidentally place something in the wrong spot or if you just want to do some quick renovation. Additionally, because of this change, it's kind of pointless for the three times damage multiplier to be applied in single player anymore. For those of you that don't know, in single player, all your damage against barricades was multiplied by three. That made it so that it's easier to destroy barricades and place down new ones. But since you can just pick them up, that has now been removed. And also, in an attempt to make bases more difficult to raid, most firearms and melee weapons will do no damage to the base whatsoever. As you can see, as I shoot at this base, I'm not getting any sort of hit marker. That's because this is doing absolutely nothing to it. If I were to get a stronger weapon, like maybe a Shadow Stalker or a Nyka Rev, then yes, I'd be doing damage to it, but it's not very wise. It's going to take a whole lot of hits, and it's just not the best decision. If you want to raid a base, you are going to need explosives, and luckily, you know, last week we got some uh, explosive additions. Anyway, in a nutshell, uh, when you build a base in a server, it will stay there for quite a while. You'll be able to actually defend it, you'll be able to store stuff in it and have reasonable confidence that it will be there when you return. Whereas before, some naked person could just punch your wall down and then steal all your stuff and then he's just freaking rich. Personally, I definitely like the change. Additionally, we have colored umbrellas now. The original umbrella was changed from red to black, and then now we have all these other additions that span the IDs of 1122 to 1128, and they are all the colors as you see here. And also, these umbrellas were changed in, uh, in my opinion, a very good way. Now they only affect downward velocity. So I did see a lot of comments about how potentially overpowered these uh, umbrellas are with how people could basically jump over barbed wire fences or jump over the walls of a base and be able to infiltrate it that way. Um, now that is no longer the case, and it's also a lot more realistic. Well, it wasn't really realistic in the first place, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Now you jump a reasonable height, but now the umbrella only helps you when it comes to falling. So as you can see, I jump a normal height, but I still flutter down. So if I find a place that's higher in elevation, uh, so like if I were up on top of that tree, I could jump off with the umbrella, and then I could float down to the roof, but I would have to get up there in the first place. Whereas before, I might actually have been able to jump and go all the way up to the roof without having any sort of other thing to jump off of, like a tree or a crane or whatever. Now keep in mind that umbrellas are already rare in and of themselves, so as of right now, I'm definitely very happy with its rarity to usefulness ratio. Lastly, we have new notes. Three of them, actually. So last week's update, we had the first note, and as you guys know, that was over at the uh, research facility of Yukon on this map here. Uh, but now we have three more, and I don't know where they are. Like, I'm being straight up honest. So uh, it's, I guess it's kind of a race to see where those locations are. I'm going to be looking for those later today, and I'm going to post a video of those locations when I find them. If you guys happen to find them, be sure to comment them down below. And lastly, minor improvements, but I'm definitely happy with the change. The bear and cow models were widened to make them look a little bit beefier and now the bears look a little bit less like female deer and more like well bears but anyway that pretty much wraps up everything added in unturned 3.13.8 there were a few minor little tweaks and fixes that i didn't cover in this video but if you guys would like to check those out as always i will put the full update post in the description down below thank you guys so much for watching make sure to rate comment subscribe and do all that gibberish because me like big boom is out